Uh, let's talk about internal controls. Because everyone likes cache, um, you know, temptations, right? Think about the Lord of Ring, right? That ring has that power, right? Tem for strong temptations. Whoever wears that ring, that's, you know, you fall into that temptation. Whoever get close to cash, right? <laughs> Maybe it's not your cash, but <laughs> the temptation is there. So there's significant risk of uh, people stealing the cash from the company. Okay, so uh, back re reconciliation is the detective control. Okay, what does that mean is, so if you want to test some, if somebody is, um, you know, uh, what is called a DUI, driving under influence, right? Driving under influence. Uh, so you want you ask them to blow their breath into the device, right? So this device will will be able to detect the level of the alcohol, right? Whatever you know. So this is a detective control. So I'm gonna use a device to test on you, and if there's an issue, I can catch on that, right? So for bank reconcil bank reconciliation is the, is the thing detective control. Once you perform the bank rec you are able to detect if anyone is stealing the money, okay? So of course, the person who do this job has to be appropriate employee, okay? Uh, and also prevent preventive controls, right? So if you don't want young people to drink, right? Make sure, you know, they have to show the ID, uh, show that their birth date, or whatever, to prove they are they are they are at the appropriate age for buying, you know, alcohols, right? So this is the preventive controls, right? So you use ID as a way to prevent the kids from having access to the alcohol, things like that. So you you understand the different types of controls, right? The minute you start doing the bank reconciliation, that's a detective control, right? Uh, the result of the reconciliation is going to tell you something, right? Uh, the preventive control is like you want to prevent things from happening, right? At the first place. So you see the difference between preventive and detective? Okay, so then what's the preventive control for to secure guard your cash? Well, segregation of duties, okay? How do you, how do you think a bookkeeper can steal money, right? Think about that. If I'm the bookkeeper, okay, how can I steal money? Man, I'm so bad. I'm teaching you how to steal money. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> well, as an auditor, you need, you need to understand, right? What is the, you have to know, like you, if, if you are, um, you know, a good IT person, right? You are fighting against uh, the hikers. Well, you have to know how to hike computers, right? Only if you understand how the hikers hike other computers, you are able to define, right? So I think as an auditor, we are on the same shoes, right? We are not going to steal money, but we have to understand how other people steal money. So here is what a bookkeeper can do, okay? Okay, so the customer came to the bookkeeper uh, paying for the AR, right? Paying for the AR. So how the bookkeeper can steal the money? The bookkeeper, the normal, the normal thing to do, right? The, the ethical bookkeeper will do, okay, I collect, the, I keep the cash, I debit the cash, I credit AR on my book, and then I go to the bank, I deposit the money to the bank, right? That's the ethical bookkeeper's job, right? However, if a very, very bad bookkeeper, this is what he's gonna do. He's gonna, he's gonna debit what? Debit uh, allowance for doubtful account and the credit AR. <laughs> so basically he can write off this AR. You know, basically, you know, we are saying, oh, this person passed away, right? The AR become uncollectible. Remember in uh, 2100? So the minute you identify amount uncollectible, you are going to write it off, right? So when you write it off, you debit allowance for double count, you credit AR. So your AR still decreased, but your cash does not increase. And then you don't deposit the cash you keep it in your own pocket. So on the book side, cash did not increase. And on the bank side, cash did not increase. And the cash, I guess what, is in your pocket, okay? Um, see, this is the problem, right? So the bookkeeper can just lie saying, you know, I write off this AR because the customer passed away. This one it become uncollectible. But the real story is you receive the cash and you keep it in your own pocket, right? 
But even you perform bank rack, because non there's no cash effect on both book and bank, so you can you cannot detect this issue. Therefore, you have to have segregation of duties. So keep in mind, whoever is doing the book should not touch the cash. Okay, if you are your job is to making the transaction records, you should not have duties to deposit the cash to bank. In that case, in that case, um, the story will not be complete, right? The minute you do bank rack, you would cause this issue, right? So segregation of duties is really important. Make sure, make sure one employee does not have too many duties that the employee can take, take advantage of to steal the money from the company. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Very good. Segregation of duties. But it's easy to say to, than to be done, OK? What happened is uh, sometimes a small company they cannot hire like a lot of employees, right? They cannot afford to hire a lot of employees. One person indeed is doing a lot of things, right? Okay, so guess what? For the family business, for the small uh, media-sized enterprise, do you know who is the accountant? Who is the bookkeeper? <laughs> it's a trusted family member, <laughs> right? So. You know, you you put a you you put a, a trusted family member to be the accountant to be the book, bookkeeper, right? So that's not an issue, right? Uh, so segregation of duties, right? For big corporations, the accountant will never touch the physical assets, right? The accountant is only deals with is about bookkeeping, right? All this number wise issue, he has no access to the physical assets, so the segregation, right, of the duties. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of different activities, right? The employees make sales to customers, okay? Record credit sales as AR. Customer pay in cash, credit cards, right? Employee record payment against the account, right? Debit cash, credit, AR. Um, employees will combine all the cash uh, from different counters and make deposit. When you are in the Costco, do you see? Sometimes the manager will walk around, try to uh, get all the collecting all the paper bills, right? And they are they are the designated person is going to count all the paper bills, and they're going to make a deposit to the bank, right? Um, so basically, make sure the accountant and all the persons who are doing this uh, physical deposit, right? Because in that case, there the creates rooms for the accountant to stealing money. Uh, but this is not perfect, right? What about collusion? <laughs> what about collusion, right? Um, the accountant and the person who is actually truly making the deposit, they decide to collude, right? To steal money and they, they split the money. That's also can happen, right? So the best way to do is hire a trusted family member to be the accountant. <laughs> okay, so segregation of duties. Hey, can I throw in something? Yes, go ahead. There's a there's a really good documentary on Netflix called All the Queen's Horses. If you've seen that, and it's about a woman down in somewhere in the states in a city of about ten thousand people, I want to say. And over the course of like twenty years, she stole over fifty million dollars. Oh wow! Basically, she could get away with it because there was no segregation of duties. Uh, oh, she wow. was like she was like the start and finish of it all. But it's a uh, it, it kind of like echoes everything that you're just saying. Yeah, and it showed it was. They said it was actually easier to get away with at a smaller place than a bigger city, like yeah. get, like New York, for example, because there was no segregation. It was the yeah. Oh, thank you very much for sharing that. Yeah, I didn't watch that uh, documentary. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. Thank you. Okay, so that's very important, right? If you start your own business. Right, the first thing you're gonna think about is safeguard your cash, your asset, and think about the concept you just learned, segregation of duties, okay? Uh, and here's a story in Lesbridge, <laughs> 2014, uh, November 7, uh, 19th, Lesbridge Herald. Uh, so the regional police charged a 58 year old man in connection with an internal theft from the University of Lesbridge. 
So in October, police responded to a report of suspicious banking activities involving a 58 years old man and the investigations by members of the economic crimes unit was subsequently initiated. The investigation determined that between December 2012 and November 2014, a 58 year old man who was employed, employed as a parking manager at UFL still stole money from campus parking meters, totally, totally nearly 60,000. Okay. <laughs> okay, in this case, um, you know, in the parking meters, right? So he's the person to collect the, the parking, uh, the coins probably, whatever. And uh, maybe he's doing this job on his own. And then who knows, who knows how many coins has been inserted into the parking meter every day. We don't have a number, right? And he's the only person there and he just decided to keep everything to himself. And uh, time matters, right? Look at that, <laughs> you know? Totally 60,000, that's still a lot of money. Um, so what would be a way to deal with this kind of issues in terms of control? Does anyone have an idea? Mm, I'd say one idea is make it all digital, but like obviously... Maybe yeah. it's too expensive to, to uh, install everything. It's too expensive. And allowing the flexibility maybe is, uh, is favorable. Favor is, I think maybe that some students like the idea to use their coins, whatever. I think um, I think one way we can um, deal with fraud is um, having spontaneous checks. Sorry, your background is echoing. I can't hear you very well. Would you mind to repeat yourself? So one one way we can um, we can guard against um, fraud or theft is um, having spontaneous checks. Uh, you are seeing uh, some what kind of checks you uh, like um, you check on the cash office from time to time uh, having okay. spontaneous checks on the cash office oh. from time to time. Okay, yeah, maybe some of the vehicles has the parking permit, right? They don't have to pay to the parking meter, right? So if you check the number of the vehicles parked on the parking lot, that's a good idea. But it's it's still harder to estimate how many coins should be in the parking meters, right? That's a good thought. Yeah. Anyone else? Is there no receipt or anything that has like a recording of all the coins that came in? Uh, no receipt. Yeah. Um, it's expensive to install cameras, right? It's a cost, the benefit. And then how about um, having all the you know, all the cars that. Uh, drop coins in the meter to impute their plate numbers. So you are saying all the cars to uh, insert coins? Some of the cars- All, 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 the, all, the, cars, all the cars that insert, inserted coins should impute their plate numbers. Oh, this plate, they are, they are maybe a... Uh, hmm, I don't know how, how that would work. No, no, what, who's I'm gonna take it? That, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that all the cars that parked and drop the coin should impute their plate numbers. So you can use the plate numbers to check for which car has which car has dropped the coin, and then you can reconcile that. And then which plate number you don't find uh, listed and is parked means that they didn't drop the coin. Okay, I I think the voice is really bad on my side. Maybe some students. Did you guys have the same issue with the 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 voice, the microphone? Can someone tell me, explain to me what has been said? No, I can't really hear what he says. Yeah. Try it's, typing it in the clear. chat. Your answer. Sorry, a, a loose gun. Something is wrong with the camera. I, I think maybe his background. Yeah. So something with the background is. So me and the other student cannot hear you very clearly. Uh, do you mind to type your uh, your your solution uh, through the chat? Maybe you are using cell phone or something, maybe too, too far away from your voice. I don't know, but I really, uh, I tried really hard. I still cannot recognize your voice. Okay, uh, what about, uh, what about us, uh, you know, send another person with him? Oh, that, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that more expensive? <laughs> It'd be cheaper actually. Because uh, you're already paying both of them, so 
you just oh. send them out both out right or when he's on vacation then uh yeah and if then you can just do it and then compare it from previous yeah. year to see hey is there a change in is there a discrepancy yeah yeah so uh so yeah so basically uh i think a loose guy's point is the the cars parked should type in their uh, plate numbers and the car parked can be checked uh yes yeah so um yeah that would work maybe it's more work you have to make sure there is the printout so this is just a really basic facility right back in 2014 you have a parking meter you just insert the coins right uh, and then the parking meters display a time right they, you probably don't even get a receipt or you don't have a way to uh, type your uh, plate numbers if you're thinking of now yeah we're you know it's more digitalized right back in those days uh, it's less advanced in terms of technology yeah uh, so sometimes yeah if you if uh, so mutual monitoring right if you believe that uh, you know it's too uh, uh, tempting to uh, tem uh, attempting thing for people to steal maybe uh, you know send a group right send two peoples it's called a mutual motoring right mutual motoring so um, that would help out but my major takeaway from this uh, <laughs> this case is I wish by the age of 58 I'm wealthy enough I don't have to steal money <laughs> So I hope that, that that's the same uh, so lessons you, you are going to learn. By your age of 58, okay, I really wish you, you are in a very, very good financial position so that you don't have to steal money, okay? Yeah, it's too bad. Wow. But amazingly, you never know, right? You, you don't even believe that you can steal in total $60,000 from the parking meters. Wow, that's a lot of times every time i think he must keep the money probably uh does the university but, have internal um, audit um department or something it's considered as a I, because the amount can consider in terms of the revenue of ufl sixty thousand dollars is not a lot of money right true yeah so the university has to allocate their resources um into the major risk the major the material remember we talked about the material material materiality concept right right it's really it's matters. immaterial for them yeah. because of the so they would think about this right even some people is unethical maybe they can steal sixty thousand dollars something we said oh maybe it's high risk because it's cash but the materiality is low right the, no i mean uh the amount of effect is low right even though it's very risky but you know it's a balance right you you, you cannot uh send a supervisor to supervise him and then send another supervisor to supervise to, to supervise the other supervisor <laughs> it's too costly <laughs> yeah sorry Thanks. somebody else was yeah yeah the other thing is like um as you said the uh, professor um if the person is paying like coins for